Hi and welcome to the next video in the Locator Strategy Series. In this video, we are going to be talking about the CSS Locator Strategy. CSS locators are used to find or select the HTML elements you want to style or you'll be using in your automated tests. CSS provides a syntax for designing these selector strings, such as ID, class, different attributes, different states and positions, as well as different hierarchy of elements that you can use. We will be going through these in this video. Let's get started. The first one that we're going to look at is the ID and CSS provides the syntax of the hashtag. The ID attribute in most cases is the ideal way to find an element when it is available. The reason for this is that IDs on a page should be unique and it should remain consistent when you reload the page. If you encounter a page that has dynamic IDs, you would have to move on to finding another locator strategy to identify your element. So in this example, we are going to go to the internet Aruko app forward slash login. We're going to right click and inspect. If we inspect the username field, we realize that it has an ID of username. If you command F, you should then be able to search by string selector or expat. If we add hashtag username, and remember hashtag is the syntax that CSS uses for IDs, we should realize that we have found this username field. We can do the same thing for password. So it has an ID of password, we say hashtag password. The developer tool also tells you one of one, which means that this is a unique identifier that you can use in your test automation. The next thing that we're going to look at is CSS class, and it uses the syntax of a full stop. So if you're going to be using a class, you say full stop and then the class name. If you require both class names to make it unique, you can chain them by saying dot class one dot class two. Let us look at the class that is on this login button. We see a class of fa hyphen sign hyphen in. So we can say dot fa sign in and that should find the class for the login. And we should be able to use that as a unique identifier unless it is that this class is not unique to this item. If it is that case, you can use it alongside IDs. So you can say hashtag id space dot the class name. So if you look at this example, we have the subheader, which is the class, but we also have an ID of content. So if it is that the subheader was not a unique class, we can pair it along with the ID for the content to create a unique identifier. You can also use more than one class. So you could have said dot example space dot subheader and this would have also given you a unique identifier. You would use this in the case that subheader existed somewhere else but the parent was not the class dot example. So dot example would have been unique and then you would have drilled down to say dot subheader to get to the H4 element. Let's talk a bit about CSS attributes. Attributes can be specified by taking the attribute assignment and dropping it into square brackets. Attributes are more than just names. For example, the ID that we just looked at, that is an attribute. So we could have said ID equal to something. I have a video where I talk about attributes and I'll link it below so that you can get an understanding of what attributes are. If we look here, we see that we have the attribute name and it is equal to the value username. 
in CSS, we can say attribute equals some value in square brackets. So we can say name equal username, and this will return to us a selector that we can use. We can do the same thing for the password. So we can say name equal password, and that should find that element. But what about if it is that we only want to use what it begins with? We can use name, the symbol caret or upside down V, <laughs> equal pass. And this will find us what that attribute value starts with. We can do the same thing for username by just saying name caret equal user. So you can use the entire attribute value or you can use what it begins with. Similarly, you can find an element by using what the attribute value ends with by saying attribute dollar sign equal value. In this case, name dollar sign equal name or the ending of password which is word css states work along with the element that they follow so you have the element colon and the state that you are checking for so let us look at this input field that is disabled if we say input colon disabled it will return to us all input fields that are disabled. The same can be done if it is that we have an anchor tag and it would have the keyword visited. So we can say a colon visited and if it is that that exists, it would return that element to you for you to use. CSS positions also work alongside with the element that they follow. So for example, if you have an element that is followed by another element, you can use the greater than sign, say element greater than the element that it follows. So if we look here, we have li and inside the li we have an anchor tag. So the li is the parent of the anchor tag so we can say li greater than anchor tag and that will return to us all anchor tags that have a parent of li we can do the same thing for the li as the li is inside a ul so all li's that are inside a ul will return to us in a case like this where we have a lot of elements we can use end child to find that specific position for that li nth child find the nth position that you pass in for whatever element that you're looking at so if we enter one it will find the first occurrence of a li that has a parent of a ul if we enter four it will find the fourth occurrence of a li that has a parent with a ul and so on and so forth now this may not be the best way to find an element, but the option to use it is there. Other CSS position syntax include first of type. So if we want to find the first li of its type, we can say li colon first hyphen of hyphen type. And this will return to you the first li. We can do the same thing for the anchor tag by saying a first of type, and it will return to you the first anchor tag. Similarly, we can find last of type with CSS. So we can say li colon last hyphen of hyphen type and it will find the last li. I mentioned before that using nth child may not be the most efficient or best CSS locator to use. You can look at IDs or class name. In this case, we could have used the attribute. href is an attribute for the anchor tag so we can use href and its value to find the link that you would want to click on. If the href value is long you can use the caret symbol to find the starting point as well as the dollar sign to find the end. The CSS syntax for elements is just to have the element on its own. 
So for example, if we have this H1 tag and it is the only H1 there, we can find the header. Here it is unique. We can also look at H2 and it is unique as well. There are other elements such as button. So a button is an element. So if we use that element along with other things, we can make it unique, such as the form ID. So we can say hashtag login, as hashtag is the syntax for ID in CSS, space, and the element name, which is button. And that will find you a unique identifier using ID and element. Let's recap. So the syntax for ID with CSS is a hashtag. So you say hashtag and then the ID. For class, you say full stop and then the class. For the element, you just have the element itself. Remember that you should always try to get an ID or a class or try to pair both as an ID is most times a unique identifier that will not change. Attributes are also good to use if they are unique. So you can say in square brackets, attribute equal to some value. Or you can say attribute caret or upside down V equal to the start value. So that is going to find what the attribute value starts with. Or you can find what the attribute value ends with by saying attribute dollar sign equal to the end value. You can use the attribute state such as input disabled, input active to find that element that has a disabled tag or active tag on it. CSS allows you to select elements where the parent is an element. So for example, when we had done UL, greater than li is going to find all li's that have a parent that is a ul. We also talked about element first child, for example, a colon first child. And what that would do is find every anchor tag that is the first child of its parent. Same for last child. It finds the element that is the last child of its parent. With first of type, it finds the first element of its type for its parent. So if it is that you have a UL and in that UL you have a LI and then you have a button. If you say button first of type, it will return the button because it is the first of its type there but if you say first child it would have returned li because the li would be the first child for the ul while if you say button first of type it would be the first button element for the ul similarly with last of type it finds the last element that is of that specific type for its parent. And then nth child positioning, where you pass in the number one, two, or three to find what position that element is from its parent. You may ask if CSS can find a specific text by saying maybe A contains the text that you're looking for. But no, CSS does not have this syntax. XPath has that syntax though, where you say forward slash forward slash the element contains text open bracket, comma, and the text that you're looking for. And in XPath, this will find you the exact element locator that you want. XPath is next on the list, so the next video will cover XPath selectors and demonstrate how to use them.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.